All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome back to part two, not four, part two of the double dip of Your Deck Live, a show where I play Your Deck Live on stream. This is Aethermax Ponza deck, and we have tuned it up. That's right. If you missed the old version of the deck, we played it to a two and three record, and um, we lost to Boros Burn and Mono Black Aggro twice. Because, unfortunately, while Frenzy Tilling is a super cool card, um, it's not very good against one drops and burn spells. So, that was the old list, one, two, and three. But now we have a new list, and we've updated the deck. Um, this is my rebuild of the deck to what I think is a more playable, best version we can do. We still have Ponza Elements. Um, we are definitely not nearly as land destruction based as the old version was we're not playing five meta stone rains but we have uh three copies of ravager worm which can kill a land with an activated ability is isn't a mana ability this kills all the castles this kills mutiful this kills ramanap ruins it could also be uh a removal spell it can have six toughness to survive from Kozlek's return honestly it seems pretty good in this deck so we got ravager worm we got world breakers our primary ld spell uh very very powerful of course and um we were working in a Delirium engine here, so we had... These K returns were okay. The front side wasn't very good. The back side was good, though. So we're trying to just get them into the graveyard and then cast them that way. And also, we're now playing many less lands. Um, we're not playing the Aboreal Grazers. We're playing Traverses. We're trying to, to be able to have a little more meat in our deck. Our last deck had a lot of air in it. And um, I felt like we would just draw out of the air and not really do much. So we're trying to meet, meet up our deck here a little bit. We have some, two, some two targets for Traverse. We have a Glorybringer, which is obviously great. We have an Ishkana, which is great against aggro decks. We have a Ballista, which is an artifact for Delirium, while also being um, just a good card to get. One Bone Crusher Giant, uh, and then of course Tracker and Corsair. We're playing effectively five copies of Karyatid, uh, four Karyatid and one Paradise Druid, because the ramp is important. Want to cast Chandra in turn three. And four copies of Seder Wayfinder, which will help us find our lands, put cards in the graveyard, turn on Delirium, get uh, both a Worldbreaker and K Return in the graveyard. And, um, yeah, nice simple mana base. We, we cut black, so our mana is much smoother now. We have room for a Field of Ruin, a Sanctum of Ugin, and uh, a couple shelter thickets. We're playing one copy of Wastes as a way to get back our Warbreakers and fetch. Um, and um, a couple, couple uh, Fable Passages here. There's a few things. Put the land in the graveyard for Traverse. Double Trigger on Tracker. Uh, shuffle for Corsair of Crew Fix. So, pretty sweet. And, of course, Castle Garen Brig can help us cast Warbreaker one turn early, which will hopefully be enough. Cyborg's got a lot of the same cards. Uh, the Chandras are really, really good against Control. Um, Magnus Ray is really good against Mono Red Aggro. We have the fourth copy of K Return, the fourth copy of Tower Striker for matches where those are good. And then a smattering of one-ofs. We can tutor up with our Traverses. Uh, we're Kindling Phoenix. We have a copy of Dire Fleet Daredevil. We have a copy of Arnie T, the old Carnage Tyrant. Uh, Ishkana, a second copy for Agrodex, Dodge Tracker, Scavenging Goose for Graveyards, Rex Sage for Enchantments and Artifacts, you get the idea. And then one Amber Cool, of course. Uh, could maybe want an Eidolon for the combo deck, but I don't know, we didn't play it. I mean, one Vivian Reed for, again, against uh, against slower decks, a little bit of a extra top end. So, this is my Double Dip version 2. This is my version of Aethermex Ponza deck in Pioneer. And uh, you want to know how to get your deck on your deck live? Well, it's really not that hard. I'm not gonna lie, not that hard. Um, get the right list here. Uh, Magic Online's been going really, really slow today, so I apologize for that. Um, that's the one, and get that in there. Maybe we'll actually restart Magic Online. I'll we'll try and match, see how it goes. So you want to see your deck live on stream? I have a website. It is jimdavismtg.com. And of course, you should go there anyway, because my articles are there and everything else is there. But on the top, I play your deck tab. All the information you need, the your deck live, how much it costs, what do you get, the queue, how to submit, how to logistic, how to schedule, etc., etc., etc. It's all on there. JimDavisMTG.com. So want to see your deck played live on stream. That's how you do it. All right. I'm also looking forward to casting Emmer Cool out of the board. Should be sweet. And we are a little behind schedule today. By a little, I mean a lot. Man, we are really behind schedule. Wow. All right. Uh, where's our match? There it is. Going first. 
And our opener is kind of mopey. Um, we are on the play with Bone Crusher, a braid, but we have this Worldbreaker and this is kind of pretty hard to cast. Um, we are drawing to five Paradise Druid effects, four Seder Wayfinders, three copies of Traverse. So that's a total of 12 non land good draws as well as 20 lands. So about half our deck is pretty good. And we have two kill spells also. I'm going to keep. Let's see how it goes. We need some lands, but we'll see. We also we draw one land, we can play Corsair, which can find more lands, so let's give it a spin, see what happens. Yes, we had a few very slow mono black aggro players in our last league. Our first match, our opponent killed us with 40 seconds left on their clock, and they were playing mono black aggro. I believe they were double queuing which means they are playing two matches at once. That's my guess. But, punt a ball against a six. So that's good for us. Okay, mountain. We drew a land, too. Now, we're going to play Rootbound Crag here. Have the ability to stomp. We don't have to cast Bone Crusher on three. We have the option to. So, mm. Well, that's a land that gets killed by Ravager Worm. I'm actually pretty pumped, pretty pumped with, these, with these Ravager Worms. Uh, we're not going to Bone Crusher. We're going to take the extra damage for no reason. We're going to play with this land tap so I go. Try and draw another land to can play with Tracker. We don't want to play Tracker and never just die to a, a Wild Slash, so... I would say if we draw like land, land, we're in phenomenal shape. Alright, they're going to stomp us. Which is fine. We can abrade the Bone Crusher. It's not a big deal. Take some damage. Let's draw a land here, please. That is not a land. Oh boy. If we have Goblin Chain Whirler, we are in big doo doo. Um, Paradise Root is also really bad with K Return. The, the Paradise Root might be bad. We're only playing one. It's kind of like our fifth copy of Karyatid. It might just be bad. Uh, but. I'm just gonna play the tracker. Am I? Ugh, I should just draw a land. Oh man, what do we do here? We don't want to Ishkana without Delirium, so. Otherwise, it's a, uh, a massive spider or whatever that card was called. I think we just say go. They have like a Chandra's turn, it's like pretty bad, but. Soul Scar Mage. Soul Scar Mage. Well, this is actually great. So now we're gonna we're gonna stomp. They're gonna like lightning strike us in response. We're gonna untap a guess K return. Which is phenomenal. It's a great, great outcome for us. Fantastic. They got two cards left. We're taking a land there, but, you know, it's fine. So they got three cards in hand. Don't glory banger me, please. Abbot of Carol Keep. Okay, so they're, they're, the, they're the more aggro version of, uh, of mono red. They're not chonky red. Hey, we just can't draw a land. Um... Play Bone Crusher, it might die. It might not, though, honestly. I just play the Bone Crusher Giant. I don't think playing Karyatid is really great. And I would love to just draw land, which we could definitely do. We're definitely due to draw land here, so. Yeah, them having six lands, us having three is not ideal. Although I think that them not having, like, the bigger cards is actually better against us. Or good for us, I mean. Castle, sure. That was great. So they're flooded. That's phenomenal. Wayfinder's also great. 
Don't fail me now, bud. We have Castle Garenbrig and uh, Thicket. We want the castle. We put a sorcery and a land in the graveyards. So now we have Delirium. Fantastic. We are cooking with gas, my friends. Next turn is Ashkana for a bunch of tokens. They could have Burn Spell and um, Castle here to kill the Karyatid. I don't think we risk that. I'm just going to block. Maybe just live. We're going to be in great shape. So They have triple Ramanap Ruins, so we are effectively at you know a lot lower life than it looks like. Well, now I just cast the... Uh, the Warbreaker, I guess, right? Although, if I Warbreaker a Remnant Bruins, they get to sack it in response. Hmm. So, we're probably better off killing the castle. Um, can also just Ishkana here. I think playing the Warbreaker is the best thing. It just kills him really fast, too. Uh, alright. Yeah, let's just do that. So we'll kill the castle. It's, like, a little weird, obviously, but... Oh, we, we have a cave return, too? I didn't even notice that. Uh, we don't want to do that, but... I don't think trading a uh, carry to for a Swiss beer is good. All right, so they that goes, that goes. Don't use that, and say go. Another on a clock. This is our first game with the deck. I imagine we'd be good against the Nimbus decks though, because they're mushy five color decks. All right. Um, so. I think we're going to Chandra plus Tracker land Paradise Druid. We are leaving ourselves a little soft to a Glorybringer, but I don't think they're playing Glorybringer if they're playing Abbot of Carol Keep. So. Chandra's so good, too. It's like the perfect card for the deck. It ramps us, it does great things, it's awesome. Paradise Druid or just crack the clue. I think I should say go, actually, and just crack the clue. Best card ever printed. Scooping them up. Love to see it. All right. Good start. Good start to our rebuild here on Aethermex Ponza deck. We kill the land. We kill the land. So, mono red. I would say we would want some stuff against them. I think the worm's actually really good against them. Just a 4 5, it kills one of their lands. I would say we want Dire Fleet Daredevil, Magma Sprays, Scavenging Ooze, Ishkana. I'd say we don't want what? Paradise Druid. We can chill on World Breaker a little bit. Um. Honestly, our cave returns aren't even that good against them. Um, so I don't mind boarding down on that stuff and just being like a reasonable mid-range deck against them. Because like cave return, they have like prowess creatures and bone crusher giants. It, it kills some things, but not all. And I'd rather they just spot removal one for one them. Um... And then just go over the top with like Ravager Worm or Ashkanas and stuff like that. Scavenging Ooze. Um, I think the Worms are actively very good. They're four fives, which is like five is the perfect number against them. You can't like Chandra it, Lava Coil it, Glorybringer it, and then it can kill things or kill lands, which is great. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, I was a Ballista too. Um, Ballista's fine. I 
think I'm pretty happy with this. One Daredevil's nice, one Ooze is nice. We have, we have still got like plenty of spot removal, so I don't think we need any more uh, removal. If they have Rekindling Phoenix, we are kind of soft to that um, without Lava Coils. But we can just block it for days with the Shana, so. What do you think, Zib? I think he likes the deck. I think he likes it. Okay, um, this hand is a little slow, but I think it's fine. Tyros Tracker. Eh, we just think it here. Tracker, another best draw. Kari Zev. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're probably traversing for a land here. We could just play the Scavenging Ooze. And they just like bolt it. And we get to Dire Fleet Daredevil their bolt. But if it's a Lightning Strike, it doesn't work. And the Ooze is obviously really good. Let me just traverse for a land as they go here. It's just kind of bad, but. Just get a. Um, I guess a Forest. Not ideal. Not ideal. Good start from them, kind of iffy start from us. Soul Scar Mage. Traverse again. Hmm. I mean, we play Courser here, we can't even like really block with it. So it's almost like not even I mean, we're playing it, but. Yeah. This hand wasn't very good. Hmm. Play tracker, it just dies and step. Course is like hard we certainly want. I'm gonna play Tyrus Tracker. It's kind of weird. Maybe I should have mulligan this game. We just didn't have any removal at all. Oh, I have Stomp too. Gross. It's like Lightning Strike. We don't really care, but Stomp is the worst. Corsair is insane. We just can't cast Corsair for no value, and, we, and we're not going to block with it either. So like, we play Corsair, and then what? You know? And they're not playing Bone Crusher Giant. That is. Sketchy. It sucks too because like right, we can't daredevil the spell. If that was a lightning strike, I could daredevil lightning strike right now, which would be awesome. But it was not, unfortunately. Uh, I think we're pretty dead here. Um, we have sorcery creature. We're gonna have enchantment in the graveyard. If we draw exactly traverse, I mean, I mean, uh, fable passage, fable passage. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can survive here, but probably not. Let's play courser. Top card is Ravager Worm. That's a big boy. That is a big boy. Um, we can traverse for a land or just draw Ravager Worm. I don't think we want to draw Ravager Worm. Uh, I mean, we survived to cast it. It's pretty good. We can play, yeah, let's keep it. If we, um, next turn we can go ooze, eat. He's like, I mean, Daredevil's pretty bad too. Eh, I should shuffle it away. Our out is probably having Fable Passes on top of our deck, so. Or on top, or under, or under that card, if this lives, which probably won't, so. Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Alright. Lightning strike me. That means I am 100% dead. So, they had a really good hand. We honestly had a, a hand that might have been a trap with no removal spells. Yeah, and they just, they just had it all. We're just dead. Alright. That's okay. That's okay.
Pretty good hand. No kill spells on our side. Some insane scoop lag here. Magic Gauntlet has been heinously slow today. Heinously slow. We're still, we're still doing ponds of things. We got World Breakers and Ravager Worms. We boarded some out against the Mono Red deck, obviously, but... Um... Still pretty convinced we don't want returns, especially on the play. Like, the Prowess creatures are really awkward to return anyway. Doesn't kill the 1-3, doesn't kill Bone Crusher Giant, so... You know, we have a solid 6 removal spells and carry 2 helps too, so... Going first. Come on. Castle Garen Brig. If you were a forest, this hand would be great. Not great, but... Yeah, we can't keep this hand. If this was a forest, we could, we could traverse for a land on one. We could keep it, but... We can't keep it. Okay, this is significantly better. Um, I think we ship the second Sylvan Caryatid. Decks on the overlay, my friends. Thanks to Cardboard Live. You can also do exclamation point deck and shot. I should load the deck. Opponent uh, keeps seven. We ship a carry to... Why is the uh, deck command not working? Is the overlay working? Mountain. Soul Scar Mage. Okay. I mean... Honestly, Chandra, Ballista, and, pa and Passage get us there to to Ishkana by itself, so. So, untap. Traverse the wall. That's also pretty good. Um, oh, duh. We can't Passage yet. I'm an idiot. Obviously, obviously, usually you passage for four mana for whatever, but we obviously have a, obviously have a, a mana creature in hand. Um, okay, give me a second here. I'm being dumb. I'm not thinking very clearly today. Awkward. I don't really want to traverse for a land. Um, I also don't want a ballista for one. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, we're just going to untap. I mean, just say, just say go. We could play Ballista. Literally just like the chump block, but that just seems bad. Dyklist is good now. Yeah, we just like can't block here. Okay, no spell, no nothing? Okay. So, we get forest. We can untap. We're probably gonna just Chandra down one. Ooh, that's pretty good. Wayfinder. We can just like Chandra down one of the creatures, let them kill the Chandra. It's fine. And then next turn we get to uh, Ish. Can we ballista two to Ishgana? Block shoot. What are they doing over there? They definitely have stomp and like a couple other burn spells. Kill the wayfinder. We Chandra. We kill the soul scar mage. They stomp our Chandra. They attack us. Um. 
And we're still not... I should have played this last turn, I think. Just chump block where they get Delirium. Alright, I'm gonna play the Wayfinder. Sanctum starts. We got a we got a a world breaker in there too. It's kind of nice. We drew a land, so we can go ballista. Just make some blocks. Get delirium. Get a Shigana in play. I see we only have a uh, creature land artifact yet, but I should put Chandra's turn. Etsy boy, reach up, welcome back. Maybe we should play Chandra. They have their own Chandra. It's kind of gross. They had two red here, we're in big trouble. Yeah, obviously. Definitely, um, we're suffering these games. We we have a draw any removal spells. They're gonna lightning strike us. Uh, so we cast traverse and ballista dies. We have delirium. Um, I also like to get get to work on the Chandra. All right, what's um? Let's block one of them. We'll go to 11, then shoot Chandra to, five, to 4, attack it to 3, play Ashkana. So that's 3, so Traverse is 4, so drawing, drawing the land there kind of sucks, but we have to Traverse for a land anyway. We do have war. We have, we have Warburger in the bin, and we have a, a Sanctum in play. So we have a we have a late game per se. Odat Pro Deck Tech. Uh, we can do it after this. Um, after this league, make sure you remind me, right? Abadikaro Keep. Soul Scar Mage. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, six, you have seven mana. I mean, Shandra making mana is actually pretty good. So we can get back our, our Warbreaker and cast it next turn. And then get another one and cast that one. What are they up to over there? Another Abbot of Carol Keep. This one exiling Mountain. That's fortunate. That's a lot of prowess stuff. Alright, we're at 9. I mean, now I kind of want that Kozlex return, but that's not an option, obviously, so you're going to braid. It's not the worst. They do have a lot of stuff in blood. Um... We can cast Chandra. We can make two red and sack to get the Worldbreaker back. I'm aware we're going to die next turn. They should have two cards in hand. They have a Chandra activation. We have, like, some blockers and stuff, but this is pretty scary. We can also, uh, one, two, three, and then one, two. We can, uh, upgrade something as well.
Where does it go? You play the waste so you can search for it with uh, fable, fable, the fable passages. Um, no attacks. I mean, we have the abrade after blocks, to be, which we can kill an abbot of Carol Keep. It's going to be a messy turn. It's going to be a messy turn. Like, they have a couple spells here. Their board is really, really big. This card's so cool. I love this card. I'm happy Abbot of Carol keeps seeing play again. Mountain, please. Lava Coil? God, what a sicko. Alright, it's not actually that bad. Spiders. That boss is looking so good now, too. Yes, obviously, Cosmic Storm would have been good this game. Yes. <laughs> They've drawn all their creatures, and uh, we haven't drawn any spot removal spells, so clearly, Cosmic Storm would have been good this game. The return doesn't kill these super easily, but obviously kills Abbots really easily. The Glitch King, thanks for following. If you haven't followed this with that follow button, of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Welcome. They just literally have drawn only creatures this game. That was a really good one, too. <laughs> this is just silly. Alright. Uh, Coils targeting Ishkana. Alright. So we've got to make some blocks here. If they have another spell here, we're, in, we're just in huge trouble, but it's not much we can do. They shrunk my Ashkana down. Poor Ashkana. I mean, we're going to abrade one of the abbots. Um, I think we should almost assume they just don't have a spell, because we probably can't win if they do, so... This is pretty gross. Well, I guess we're going to assume that they don't have any remove any a spell to cast because they're probably our only way to win. We should actually probably just jump block this and double up on this guy, and then we'll abrade one of the three twos. So. We actually want to kill the Soul Scar Mage, so put this here. Please, God, don't have a spell. Looks like they don't. Alright, so. Here we are. Still alive. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chandra's seventh. Oh, hi, that's a card. Um, I have seen worse cards than that before. That's actually insane. It's sort of like a, it's sort of like a glory bringer on steroids. Um, kill this. Cast this bad boy. We're gonna give it haste, and we're gonna fight a soul scar mage. And we're gonna kill Chandra. And we're gonna pray to God we don't die. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <sighs> Fighting is non-combat damage. That's such a huge tilt. Oh, I'm an idiot.
All right. Just didn't even, just didn't even, didn't even think about it. You used to Soul Scar Mage being like bolt your creature. It's smaller. But they didn't cast the other so Spirit. We're just dead. Top card, Ramanap Ruins. What the hell's happening? Are we just dead? Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. Um so oh, I just straight punted then. I need to I if I Chandra Minus in the Soul Scar Mage and I fight the, the Abbot, then we're like, okay. That's gross. Alright. I mean obviously you might have just died anyway, but that's pretty interesting. Um yeah, that was Okay, sure, sure, it's fine. I mean, despite the fact that their hand was really good, the game was still super close. So, deck tech time. Deck tech has to be after the league, my friend. Deck decks are not during leagues uh, during when I'm recording for YouTube. So, deck tech is after the league. Man, ugh, tough loss, tough loss. Like, we maybe kept a hand we shouldn't have in game two, even though it looked fine. And that game, I mean... I don't know. God, come on. Put a mulligan to six. All right, we're going to mulligan. All right. I mean, we're going to keep this. Ship Ravager Worm. Unfortunately, turn one tap land for Traverse kind of sucks, but... Mango! Sub baby. Tim. Tim, the sub baby... Taylor. Land? Ooh, cool. In that case, we just play Stomping Ground Tapped. Definitely an exciting game. Definitely an exciting game. Castle Vantress? Yeah, I think Ravager Worm might actually be insane. Frostburn Weird? That's awkward. Yeah, just give the old Seder Wayfinder. If we can find a land here. We can. Put an enchantment and a creature in the graveyard, which is cool. There's two card types in the bin. No blocks. Ooh, no land either. I hate to see it. Just kidding, we're playing Ponza. Um, we're not going to attack because we have the Flash guy, so we're going to play... Um, a Sylvan carry to and get set up for our our Ravager Worm, I suppose. Get tricky. Block skis. Frostburn weird all day, every day. Fabled Passage. Well, that's a land in the bin. And, uh... Let's get... Actually, the Wastes. We have a second Fabled Passage. We don't need to do that. Um, that's three card types. Once the Abrade is in the graveyard, that's four. And we can Traverse for, like, a... Next version, like, version of Bone Crusher, or anyway. It doesn't really matter. All right, stomp this boy out, and then uh, play the old bone crusher. Bone crusher giant's really good. I think labyrinth of whatever is good in standard blue light control. It's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. Frostburn weird, man. How nice is this gonna feel? Y'all ready for a stone rain? Raise your hand in chat if you're ready for a good stone rain. All right? Who here likes a good stone rain? Because y'all about to get it. Um, we're going to give it, I guess, haste. All right? And we're going to destroy target land with an active ability that's not a mana ability. Ponza...
Ravager Worm is kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. Um, there are a lot of lands that just... In, like, if, if Ravager Worm killed a land every time, I think it would be awesome. But, like, most of the time it won't. This card's still League 1 standard, right? So most decks play castles. Oh, that's a scoop. That's a scoop. And what if, um... Can Ravager Worm kill a cycling land? Like, can Ravager Worm kill a Shoulder Thicket? Because it has an activated ability, it's not a mana ability. It's not like, it's not an ability in play, though. Because obviously you can't cycle it from play. Because that's also cool. Um, Alright, so they're playing mono blue stuff. Devotion, I assume. Uh, they probably have Master of Waves, which is terrible for us. We have K-Return, though, which is pretty good. Um, kind of makes sense, right? That we kill it. Um, I guess Ballista can kill Master of Waves. It's kind of cool, too. Let's shave this Paradise Druid. I would say we definitely want uh, the K-Return. Um, no Chandra, no Phoenix, no Daredevil. Spray doesn't even kill a lot of their stuff. Rexage, Ooze, Tracker, Shkana, Vivian. I don't hate another Shkana. Probably cut a World Breaker because they're obviously they're kind of like an aggro deck. So I suppose this can exile Thassa, which is kind of big. Um, that's true. K returns Carlos, kills Master Waves. Also, that, that's absolutely correct. Um, Libo, resub, almost one year. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate it. Love my YouTube folks. The thing is, like, the land doesn't have the activated ability. The card in your hand has the activated ability. You can't play it from the land and play, you know? So, does the card have the ability, or the the, the, the permanent that is a land have the ability? I don't think Lord Banger's great here. Um, let's try this. Deck's kind of gas, honestly. Because if, if the Ravager Arm can kill Cycling Lands, too, it means it kills, like, a decent amount of lands. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, we're going to keep... It's not great, but... Well, speak of a devil. Maybe we'll find out this game. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's fun. Man, Ravager was all over, all over this ish. All right, we're gonna go get a land. It's going to be a mountain, I think. Chip Douglas, stay safe, right? Target the land or riot, they say. I respect that. Um, all right, we have Corsair here. Like, we have Chandra next turn. What are they splashing black for in their... Uh, in their Thassa deck. Obviously, you want to get to Warbreaker and kill Vistasa. That'd be cool. Thassa. God of the Sea. The Castle Cycle is really, really good. Like, the reason we're playing Thicket in this deck is mostly just turn on the, you know, have extra forest for Castle. 
Like, they could probably be legendary, I think. You know, because they're also kind of like a, a place anyway. I agree, the castles are pretty busted. Like, if they're legendary, there's also a deck building cost. You can't just play four of them. You can't just play four castle Lockthwain in your mono black deck, you know? It's a little more interesting. I think that was a mistake. Harbinger of the Tides. Thassa's Oracle. So we're probably just Chandra down the like one of these creatures, probably the Oracle. Just try and turn off Thassa. I don't know. We'll see what our top card is. Their board's getting a little gross. It's a land. So we could just go coarser land. I doubt we're going to be able to turn this Thassa off, honestly. If I Chandra plus... And then, like, play Ballista as a chump blocker. We can try and use the mana to cast Worldbreaker next turn. It's actually pretty good. He'll do that. They get. They guess they get just like unblockable with Asa. That costs mana though. Maybe we just burn it and kill something. We have 4k returns and stomp on top. So I guess we'll kill the Thassa's Oracle. Make them play something. Make them attack this Chandra. Um, yeah. Alright, let's do that. I mean, them as long as they're not attacking us, as long as we have time to make our land drops and survive to cast Warbreaker, I think we'll be fine this game. So, because Warbreaker does deal very, very cleanly with Thassa. They have trickster, they have trickster. What am I going to do? You know? If they spend their time and mana to kill Chandra and not me this turn, I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, Mystic Sanctuary is also a dumb card. Three cards in hand. They obviously have a good card because they just looked at her top five and put one on top. So, Thassa's Oracle is pretty good. Definitely a good magic card. Petty Theft. Wow, that's their turn? That's great. Okay. Um, so now we just play Corsair and then Stomp something. They have a counterspell, it's fine too. Wizard's Retort? Sure. Um, so I'm pretty sure we just play land and stomp this uh, this thingy now. So now they're way off Thassa killing us. And we have Ballista to kill the Brazen Borrower. This feels pretty good. It really bugs me that we share a, an adventure zone. It just like tickles me in the wrong spots. Don't like it. Not a good tickle, bad tickle, bad touch. You know, I got two cards left. They scry to the top. They're saying go. Yeah, this is great. I'll do this all day. All day. Iowish Tracker. Pretty sure it's Corsair. He's going to try to make land drops. They counter it, they counter it. Top card is K Return. Um, that's like pretty mopey. We have Delirium with only three cards in our graveyard. That's kind of sweet. That's kind of sweet. Alright, yeah, this is great. We need one more land to cast Warbreaker. We could have, I mean, we could have Garen Brig to cast two Coursers or a Tracker and a Courser, but I want to play Blister to deal with their Brazen Borrower, so the six mana doesn't really matter. So this is... Is there a reason to wait to kill this? Not really. And Trickster. Sure. 
Again, Trush trying to keep them off of the Thassa being a creature. We have Karatur next turn, so that's a the thing. They scry to the bottom. Two cards in end. What's up? Inverter of Truth. Okay, so there's some sort of, some sort of combo here, right? We exile all cards from your graveyard, your library face down, then shuffle all cards from your graveyard into your library. So if they have a Thassa's Oracle in their hand, they win the game. And there's nothing we can do about it. Right? It kind of sucks. Nothing we can do, right? Like, there's no way to stop. Uh, like, they obviously have a Thassa's Oracle in their hand. They wouldn't have done that. Um, and they have four cards. So if we're able to remove... Yeah, if we're able to remove some number of Devotion. I mean, they also just have, like, a 6-6 six, six Flyer, too, which is kind of a an issue. Um... I don't know how we're ever going to kill them before they Thassa's Oracle us, even with only four cards in our deck. Uh, we can, like, Chandra kill Trickster here, uh, but I don't see how we can win, unfortunately. It's kind of an obnoxious little combo. I've not played against this one yet. We know our top card too, so. Right. If they just wait till, if they just wait till, wait till their hands empty, we can't do anything, so. Libo, you know what he meant. Come on. Be, be nice to each other, folks. Don't be rude. It's obviously a, a crabby bulk rare. Alright, Chandra's dead. Alright, I mean, we draw, it's land. I mean, if they just have a Thassa's Oracle, where's that? So we can exile Thassa here, and I guess we can attack them for uh, an amount that is not zero, but. We didn't board an Emrakul, right? That would be a way to do things, possibly. Unfortunately, they have four. They have four. Uh, they have four blue sources. So taking them off a of blue seems pretty difficult. Uh, and we're just dead. Like I, I imagine, if they have the oracle, they're gonna have two cards left. And we're gonna die next turn. So it went top bottom. All right, so kind of cute. So if you're not aware of this combo works, that's his Oracle looks of a top X cards or X to your devotion. And if the number of cards in your deck is equal to or less than X, you win the game. So normally this is like a, a laboratory maniac kind of card where you just like, you know, you go through your whole deck, you play this and you win the game. But Inverter of Truth obviously says you have no library. So, so they play this and they have two cards in the library and we're dead. So kind of tough. Um... I don't really know what we can do about this realistically. We just have to kill them quickly, which is not really our forte. We're more of like a kind of grindy deck. And the, the combo pieces cost four and two. I guess we can like attack their black sources. But it's not like we're like that fast of a, you know, a stone rain deck. Um, I guess, I mean, we could bring in like Emrakul. Because if we can Emrakul them, and like, I guess we can't even Thassa's Oracle, the Emrakul, they can just do it anyway. Um, Lorybringer, Phoenix, Daredevil, Sprays. Can I exile their graveyard in response to Inverter? I, I guess you could, but I don't have any way to do that, so. Um, yeah, I mean, we should do a fast hand. We're going to bring the Paradise Druid back in. We're going to shave a K return. And 
We're just going to try and cast Ravager on my turn four of again. Realistically, that's all we can really do. Um, so we actually want some sprays. I think our goal is to cast Chandra and then ramp into... Um, I guess you don't even want these. Just ramp into uh, our stone range as fast as possible. Maybe we also want... It's funny, we don't really deal with the 6-6 six, six flyer very well either. Just like a little too big for us. Um, what's Inverter of Truth do? We can't block it though, we just die. Exile all cards from your library face down, then shuffle all cards from your graveyard into your library. So everything in the graveyard goes into a library. So if, if we can make their graveyard big, that could buy time. Um, Scavenging Goose will not be able to hit their graveyard fast enough, I don't think. I mean, it's just, just like a beater, which is fine. Um, yeah, make the graveyard big or make it zero. Is the the goal, I suppose. Kind of an annoying combo deck. It was like, I feel like if we were playing like thought seizes and stuff, we'd be great. Because if we if, if they go for their combo and we just thought seize them and take away their thoughts oracle, they have two cards in their deck and they just die, you know. So, but we don't really have a way to interact with the cards in their hand, the cards on the stack, or the cards in their library or graveyard. So. Killing the Oracle response doesn't do anything. Unless their devotion is not enough. They can just wait till they have zero cards in their deck and then cast the Oracle. Alright, we need a mana creature. Uh, I mean, it says the LD cards, but not the ramp cards. We gotta mulligan this. If this had a Chandra or Carrion today, we keep. But. Brutal. All right, this is what we're looking for. This is the hand. Uh, opponent mulligans to six. What are we shipping here? Do we keep both mana creatures? So, carry it on three, drew it on four, worm on five. You really dump Corsair here? Yellow Hat, Gabriel Nassif, Hall of Fame Magic player. If you haven't seen Gabe's stream, check it out, of course. Yellow Hat, thanks to the raid, appreciate that. If you're tuning in, welcome to the stream. My name is Jim Davis. This is a year deck. Live, a show where I play your deck live on stream. This is Aethermex Ponza deck in Pioneer. This is a double dip. So normally in your deck live, we, we get the deck list, we play it in the league, and, we, we, and I tune it up for them. And a double dip, I play it, tune it, and then play it again. This is my version of the Ponza deck. Uh, we are 0-1 right now. We lost a close into Mono Red, where I kind of screwed up a little bit. And now we're playing against the Thassa's Oracle Inverter of Truth deck. And we just lost game two, going to game three. And uh, I'm mulligan to six. We mulligan to... F are we on five cards? Oh, that's a huge tilt. I think I didn't count five. I thought we were only looking once. Um, we're just keeping lands, Ravager Worm, I guess. We could ship like we're definitely shipping Corsair. So we we can't really interact with their combo at all. Their combo is Inverter plus Stasis Oracle. Um, we ship a land here as we're on the play. We have to draw a runner, runner land, but at least we can have a chance to cast this on turn four. Yeah. Alright. I should have Sanctum though. I think Sanctum's just bad. Alright. Ley line of anticipation. Uh okay. Sure. So they mulligan two they mulligan to five instead of six. That's great. No Nykthos, please. But yeah, so if you're sitting in, you haven't been here before, you can follow the stream. Hit that follow button, alright? I love y'all. Magma Spray. Alright. Need to draw some lands here. Now they can combo at instant speed. That is true. That is true. Frost Burn Weird. Please draw land. Please draw land. Please draw land. No! Brutal. So game one they were just like a devotion deck and we just kind of killed them. 
We did not know they were a combo deck. And then game two, they combo killed us. And we can't really interact with our combo in any way. Oh my god, this has been nuts. Why do they cast his main phase? Weirdo. God. Alright. I mean, we're just saying go. The reason we ditch Corsair is we have to just keep, we, have, we can't if we wait at all we're dead. Uh, we can't beat them. We cannot. We can't beat their combo. We should be as fast as possible. So we're just trying to goldfish. And Corsair's not a goldfish card. Corsair, Corsair's a long game card. So, so they're gonna flash in Harbinger of the Tides and Thassa's Oracle. So we're gonna kill stuff here. Um, this is gonna resolve, and we're going to kill both of these things. Having your combo piece be Thassa's Oracle is pretty sick. This is just like a really good defensive creature if it digs really well. Like, all right. I mean, they scry four. Please draw land. Put a card on top. Obviously, I have to do it anyway. They draw land too. God damn it! Now our now our guy isn't even good. <laughs> oh man. Alright. Well, we're playing fair this game. We're hoping for like a turn four worm. That did not happen. So Shkana, sure. Have the old combo here, nothing really we can do about it. But yeah, we 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 we, we rebuilt the uh, the deck into uh, kind of a delirium Ponzi deck. The original version of the deck had like frenzy tilling and a lot more like very specific land destruction cards that weren't very good. We lost to mono black aggro twice and boros burn. So my rebuild was more fo more focused on being um, a little more of a mid range deck with a a Ponza top end. Uh, we have a delirium package for Ishkana. You can see the deck list on the cardboard live overlay, of course. So. Ravager Rome's also been pretty good. Um, there are a lot of lands in Pioneer with abilities that don't, aren't mana abilities. You can kill Fetid Pools. You can kill all the castles. You can kill Mutavault. Uh, it also can kill creatures. Ravager Rome's been pretty impressive, honestly. The put on top is a May. I'll put up to one of them. Yeah, you're right. You are right. They put a card on top. I mean, they've cast two oracles now, so that's them not having that to combo with, which is cool, I guess. Well, it can't kill Field of the Dead, but Field of the Dead is banned, so. And no land on top. Oh god, are we casting Ishkana with naked here? Oh boy, I think we are. I mean, that gives them the opportunity to bounce my Paradise Drew with a uh, with a Harbinger, but feels bad. Feels bad. Making six blue mana. Casting Master of Waves. Casting Thassa's Oracle with the trigger of a stack. I think we're in trouble, folks. The old Mull to five skis. Their Mulligan to six was pretty damn good. I mean, they had like Leyline plus Nykthos, which is pretty stupid. Um, they have no cards left, but not a great Mull to five for us. Both of our losses have been really close. Like our, our burn loss, if I had played a little, a little bit better, we probably would have won. And then we mushed them in game one this game, but they comboed us game two, and now their hand just like really good game three. 
What's up, Chungle the Dungle? God, we are super dead. So they had no cards in hand, they draw. A second Master of Waves. Alright, whatever, you win. Go away, opponent. Go away. Alright, so, tough game there, obviously. Uh, what are you going to do? We are 0-2, but the deck has felt pretty good, uh, truth be told. Um, pretty happy with the changes. Let's keep battling. Let's keep battling. Rough rough losses, rough losses. It's funny, we do have K-Return to deal with the uh, the Master Waves, but I boarded them out because it, it, we needed to be fast to beat the Thassa combos, which can't interact with it. So, maybe that was wrong. I don't know. Right, folks, streams are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com, number one source for all your game shopping needs. CoolStuffInc.com, my articles as well. Video Monday, article Friday. Yesterday's video was all about Niv to Light, the five-color Niv Mids deck in Pioneer. The deck's really good. Um, I'm not going to say I crushed in the video, but go watch it and find out for yourself. And uh, on Friday, I have an article. So, Video Monday, article Friday. Check out, of course, the great products they have as well. Uh, tons of magic cards to buy. Buy your new uh, Theros cards. Promo code GYM5, 5% off your order. And of course, card games, board games, miniatures, it's all on there. CoolStuffInc.com, your best place to shop for all of your card board needs. Also, the Hex Holder, brand new product. It's right here. Light, easy, convenient. Carries four double sleeve decks. Carries your Zibby and your pad and your pen and your play mat. Everything you need. Light, easy, convenient. TheHexHolder.com. Check it out. Check it out. Promo code GYM5. I mean, obviously, Black Black's a difficult splash, but it, it's already a fine deck, and it adds a pretty cool element to it. It's kind of hard to interact with, so... Uh, SP, 26-month resale. Welcome back, my friend. This hand is brolic. Oh, yeah. This hand is just beefcake city. Keep... Uh, CWS Caleb Shear. God damn it. He's just playing some stupid combo deck. Oh, if I don't... I have Shemulligan. God damn it. Uh, the Hex Order does not come with a Zibby, no. Stupid Caleb and a stupid combo decks. Uh, if I had noticed the name, I would have, I would have, uh, I would have mulliganed. This hand's insane and it's a random deck, but if you know your, if you just know your opponent's playing combo, you have to mulligan this hand, which kind of sucks. But yes, the Zibby Hex Holder photo shoot is coming. Uh, I guess you want a mountain or a shock, I guess. I don't think damage actually matters, so. Well, I guess I do, I do tracker, I guess. Yeah, I should have probably saved the. Thing is, they're playing a combo deck. It's not really about, like, trying to uh, draw a lot of cards against them, you know? But. He, he's playing the the Lotus Field deck, not the uh, not the new whatever deck. Yeah, I I probably should have held the held the passage. I just my play was already set from the opening hand, and drawing the tracker should have changed that in my mind. You're you're right. You're right. So we're we're down a clue. We're down a clue. I mean. Scrying here means no Sylvan Scrying. That's good. A Boreal Grazer? Ah, crap. Stage? All right. Courser of Crufix. That sucks that Ravager Orb can't kill a, a Lotus Field. They can kill the, the Thespian Stage, but we're probably not going to be able to kill it fast enough. I think we actually Courser here over Tracker. I think making land drops is far more important than drawing cards. Um... Definitely, like, seems like a horrible matchup for us. We just have, don't have any meaningful interaction. No counter spells. No thought seizes. You know, our interaction is, is six and seven mana stone rains, which is not really fast enough. What is this? Okay, so they have a lotus in their board. Chomp. 
No, they got drawn from dreams. Holy crap. Hello. Well, you wanted your passage tracker. Here it is. Um, I mean, if they don't find a uh, Lotus Field next turn, they have a chance to win this game. All right. Chandra on top doesn't really help us too much. Attack for two. The problem is they probably find a Lotus Field this turn. I guess they can't stage it necessarily. What happened to Mana to cast Drawn from Dreams, find the Lotus Field, and stage? One Detection Tower is probably way too slow, yes. Do hamsters like strangers? I mean, Zabie's never really met people that aren't his immediate family. Um, he's very friendly, though. It, hamsters, are, hamsters apparently are supposed to bond to, like, a small family group. Um, well, he loves us. I mean, he loves me, John, and Nicole. Like he sleep, he'll, he'll sleep in my lap all the time, you know. John feeds him carrots. Like he he's he, he adores us. But I don't know how he would do it. Like random people he doesn't know. Um, I'd love to bring him to like an event so people could meet him. But like it'd probably be really stressful for him, you know. So a little fuzzball. God damn it, they have Lotus Field. All right, I mean we're just dead. We we just can't beat this deck. It's, it's been a frustrating league so far because our our matches have not been very good for us. Like. We're just not equipped to be combo decks. I mean, maybe that means we need, means we need to have a like black of a sideboard for Thoughtseize or something. But <sighs> thoughts on Alexander Clamilton? I don't know who that is. Hamster survival strategy consists entirely of, well, hope it's not going to eat me. Yeah, basically. If Zibi was outside in the wild, he would die in six seconds. His instinct, when we're holding him, or he's hanging out on the couch or whatever, is, get to the, is to get to the highest possible point. So you play a game called Eagle. And you go, Kah! and we just scoop down and grab him and fly him away. He has no survival instincts at all. He would die in three seconds. That's why, that's why we like him. It's like, the gerbils are much more like, survival instincty. They're very like all the time. They're kind of like run around. But Zibby is kind of like yeah, what's up? What, are you going to eat me? You don't want to eat me. That's basically it. Alright, uh, so we draw Chandra, we Ballista. I mean, we're just like super dead next turn. We can kill a land, I guess. That's that's a thing. I mean, we, we have Ravager with haste too, right? Let's eh, just fire away, right? I mean, they, you know, they only cast two dig through times last turn, so there's no way they can beat us, right? So, we're going to give it haste, and we can kill only the blast zone, but I will take it. They are dead on board, so I guess F6, kill me. I'm sure they will. I'll go to the bathroom. Tell me when it's over.
Am I still alive? Yes, our opponent's Caleb Shear. I, I kept my hand without seeing his name. I kept like a Sylvan Caryatid double Warbreaker hand, which would be fine against most decks, but I kept and then saw his name and he always plays combo decks and we can't beat a combo deck probably, so. Looks like we're dead now, right? Yeah, we're dead. All right, well, that was fun. He just played End of the Infinite, so I think you're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Rix's mid-range with Karaxa, what, in standard? That, that's on my list of decks to try. All right, so this is just like a, a, a heinously bad matchup for us. Um, we just don't have black or blue, basically. We have no way to interact with the stack or their hand, and killing lands is not fast enough, so we're in big trouble. I mean, Emmer cooling can be pretty cool. In Pioneer, I, I don't know, honestly. All right. Uh, just bring in whatever's fast, I guess. Thank you, Ashkana. Bring in like Emmercool, another tracker. Grizzly Bears, Rekindling Phoenix. Daredevil's okay. Daredevil. I mean, I guess Carnage Tyrant. I don't even. I don't even know. Yeah, they're they're the anti LD deck because they're playing hexproof lands. It's pretty rude, honestly. We're trying to kill some lands here, you know, with nine mana spells. I guess a braid kills the O3. Better than like Carnage Tyrant or something like that. Or right, whatever, sure. Oh boy. Fall of a Thran? I card his guess. Probably wouldn't be fast enough though, honestly. Probably need like. Hmm. I mean, it could be more aggressive to play Lana Elves and play like and just board like Goblin Rabble Masters, you know. All right, so going first, our hand's got to be really good. This hand is not really good. Should I be mulliganing for a a Man Accelerator? Or just keep turn three Tracker, man. Alpine Moon does stop field actually. That is true. We could we could bring in Alpine Moon. That's definitely an option. Wait. No. What does Alpine Moon do? I believe it stops it. Um, I'm just going to keep, I guess. I mean, we, maybe, I don't even know what to do. We could mulligan and look for a mana creature. We have Tracker on three, which at least is like our... We'll probably just play, play Daredevil on two. Yeah, we'll just keep. We'll just raw dog Daredevil and play Tracker and just try and kill them. It's a land card... It was all types and abilities. Yeah, so, it, it, so Alpine Moon's actually a really good card. Uh, or Damping Sphere, that works too. So we we need we probably have too many cute one one ofs in our sideboard, but Damping Sphere, Alpine Moon, both very, very real options. I think the Underworld Breach version is very, very finicky. Oh man, they have freaking an O3. God. Nice Dire Fleet Daredevil, idiot. Like we're still... Playing it. It's so funny. It's like the best card in every deck in every format. It's not, that's, not, that's a totally false statement, but it's very silly how like played this card is in so many silly decks. Oh, do I even play with two one? I guess. Yeah. Just earn two Lotus Field. Nope. Can you Dire Fleet Adventures? No, they are creatures everywhere but the stack. We are getting aggressive. 
What else can we do? Ugh. All right. Um. Yeah, we're just tagging. <laughs> we are one thousand percent dead next turn, but we'll just keep playing our bad mid-range creatures and hope that uh things change. What's up, Mim? If you're new to Your Deck Live, it's a show where I play Your Deck Live on stream. All information's on my, my website, jimdavismtg.com. It ain't free though, so no freeloading. Yeah, this jump block, this block means that they are 100% going to kill us next turn. Aether Mac, I'm sorry. This has been a frustrating league. I think that this new build of a deck is much, much better than the old one. And I think it's actually quite good. But we are hitting some roadblocks here for sure. About to get turned forward. Um... I built the sideboard bad. There's far too many stupid one ofs. There should be some like alpine moons and damping spheres and stuff. That's my bad. That's my bad. Um, I guess we we don't really have an answer to the Thassa Oracle combo though, which we can't really do anything about. I don't think. Like I don't think there's like hard that stops that. Um, but we could definitely have alpine moon and have damping sphere for sure. Like the next seems really cool so far, honestly. The engine works pretty well. The Ravager Worm's been great. Um, just hasn't been working out for us. You know, it happens. It happens. Double cast. So you copy your next spell. So copy dig through time. So I don't believe there's any way to stop the comes into play ability in red or green. We're not dying on turn four. That's the good news. The bad news is we're definitely dying on turn five. Um, Yeah, combo is most certainly not dominant in Pioneer. Um, I guess we're just like cracking a clue here. Oh, mommy, come on! We actually have zero cards in our graveyard anyway, so. Uh, I guess we like Seder Wayfinder and then probably Traverse for a land and just hope we can find Castle Garenberg to cast this next turn on the obscenely... I mean, there's, there's no copy of their thing anyway, so... Doesn't even, you can't even target their lands. It's so rude. Um, Sanctum of Ugin. Scrybug. I mean, they just cast two dig through times. Two. Jeff with the big host too. What's up, Jeff? Thanks for the host. Appreciate that. If you haven't seen Jeff's stream, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, check it out. Jeff Jeff Hoagland, of course. Jeff's on all the time, playing all the formats. And uh, big thanks to the raid. Appreciate that. We are playing some Your Deck Live, a show where I play Your Deck Live on stream. This is this is a double dip. It's so normally Your Deck Live. You submit a deck. I tune it up a little bit. Then I play it. Uh, five matches. Then at the end, I fix the things I didn't like. So I make a whole new deck list based on what I think would be the almost optimal way to play it. This is a double dip where I play the deck immediately afterwards. So we do, you submit a deck, I tune it, play it in a league, change what I think is optimal, play it again, and then well, that's where we are right now. And um, we're playing a, this is the part two of a double dip, updated version of Aethermex Ponza deck. Uh, yeah, that's up. Aethermax first version had like frenzied tilling and some pretty narrow 
LD cards that weren't very good. Um, updated version has a kind of like a Delirium package, and we're playing Worldbreaker and Kozlex Return, and Ravager Orb's actually been really, really awesome. Uh, there are tons of lands to kill with it, which is really cool. Uh, unfortunately, we are about to be 0-3. Our matchups have not lined up very well. We lost to a burn deck. We could have played a little, a little bit better, I think, to win. And then we just lost to the Inverter of Truth Thassa's Oracle deck last round, which we can't really interact with in any way. And now we're losing to the uh, the Lotusfield combo deck. So we're playing Ponza, and our opponent's lands have Hexproof, which is kind of freaking miserable. We're just going to concede now. So, um, But it's okay. That's okay. What's up, Bigfoot? The Saram deck? Yeah, deck's super sweet. I want to work on that one some more. So, we are 0-3. We're going to finish strong here. I, I guarantee victory in our next two matches. All right? I guarantee victory. There is no way we finish this league worse than 2-3. Not going to happen. Not possible. Oh, I mean, yeah. We can literally never beat the Lotus Field deck. We have no sideboard for it. Um, I think my sideboard's misbuilt. I think we should have some, um, some like, two Alpine Moon, two Damping Sphere. Kind of like... Uh, we have too many cute one ofs for our traverses, which aren't even good. So, like, we shouldn't have no, no Daredevil, uh, no Vivian, no Carnage Tyrant, no second Ishkana, and make that, you know, four anti combo cards. So, this is the deck you can see it here. We're going to keep playing right now. And like I said, I guarantee victory in these last two matches. Mark Messier style. Guarantee. If you haven't followed the stream with that follow button, of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. YouTube folks, like, comment, subscribe. Take a few seconds, help me out. Appreciate that. Love all you watching. Alpine Moon is not great against field combo because it lets the Lotus Fields come into play without sacrificing it. I mean, yeah, they have an answer to it, sure, but... All right, so let's go. We have not tested out the theory of Ravager Worm killing a Shell to get. We think it can. We think it can, but we're not sure. We're going to find out. A lot of lands to kill. A lot of lands to kill. And that's what we're doing today. We're killing lands. Ravager Roman Worldbreaker. Getting it done. Assuming that uh, we can play a match here. If you want to know more about your deck live, check out my website. That's right. JimDavisMTGD.com. That's where you're going to go for information on me, which is great. Um, all about me, social media, my articles on CoolStuffInc.com, my sponsors, and so on and so forth. Uh, look, pictures of me. Look, it's me, my girlfriend, and my fiance. <laughs> and uh, I play your deck right here is where you see all the information on your deck live. So there it is. How much it costs, how to submit, logistics, scheduling, it's all on there. JimDavisMTG.com. Check it out. All right, we got a yeah, final ruling there. So Ravager Worm's ability can destroy a cycling dual end, which is really cool to know. So, um, okay. This hand's fine. We have our, like, you know, Bone Crusher Giant curve all by itself. We're going to keep this. And I think we're going to just hold on to Traverse. Island, go. Okay. I have guaranteed victory, so let's make it happen here. I'm just going to play a forest and say, go. Spectral Sailor. Okay. So this might also be bad for us. Where are the normal aggro decks and mid-range decks? Where are they? Please. Somebody help me. I suppose this shot is really good against them, right? Mausoleum Wanderer? That sucks. That fizzles my Bone Crusher Giant? That's really unfortunate. Oh boy. Um, alright. This is pretty bad. I mean, let's counter unless you pay one. I guess we just wait and then kill the the sailor next turn with one mana available. They have like a rattle chain. There's so many things they can have it screw it up, but I don't know what else we're doing, so. I 
All right. I mean, ooh, ooh. Okay. Um, that's a card. So now we like actively want this to not be in play anymore. So we're gonna stomp on their upkeep. And we're gonna target, I think the Wanderer, just to get this Kazos return alive. All right, so looking like they have Rattle Chains. So we could just kill something here. Man, Wanderer's so annoying. I mean, if I knew I was drawing K return, I obviously should cast the, the, the Giant on their turn, but we didn't know we were drawing that. Um, pretty sure we just try and kill the Wanderer now. They'll sacrifice it, and then we'll have Kozlov return. And they don't seem to have Queller, because they, they would have left the mana for Queller, so we'll just do this now. And we're targeting the Wanderer specifically, so we'll sacrifice it, because we want to be able to K return, even if they can pump it up. Sure. So that's fine. Um, maybe it's a fizzle anyway. What's up, nerd? Nerd. So ideally, they have no spell caller, and we get to K return them in the next year. Ooh. Okay. No company either. That could be a thing. All right, um, I wonder if they have a forest in their deck. I like the idea of, field, of having Fielder Ruin active. It's a possibility. Let's play this and say go, and we're probably gonna just gonna upkeep the uh, the K return. Could wait a turn, because they have Queller, we could like untap and play Rabbit Storm and fight it. See what they do. A <laughs> tee. Ho 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 ho. Hum hum hum. Damn, that feels good. Did I not guarantee victory, folks? I recall guaranteeing victory, all right? That's what I recall happening. Just gonna throw that out there. Whew. Whew. Oh, now that now I have two green sources, so the uh, filler room don't matter. Okay, I got two cards left, and we can literally only draw lands. But that's okay. Um, yeah, drawing company is bad. The good news is they can't really stop Ravager Worm. Like, they can't spell Queller, right? It's going to eat something regardless. So, I mean, we're not going to traverse. We're not going to do anything here. We're just going to, like, play land as they go and just field their Temple Garden, probably on, like, the upkeep, I guess. We just need them to not draw company. It's basically where we're at. We're going to upkeep it because once they know what card they draw, it might give them an extra mana. And they have absolutely we just kill it. So we don't need to do this. I mean, it, it puts us closer to Delirium, which is probably the most uh, important factor. We do have Passage, too, though. We just don't even do this. And yeah, let's do it. Because if we draw a way, a way to kill a lamb, we can also take him off green, too. So They have Avacyn, and they, and they want to cast it. We just play Ravagerm and kill it. So it's awesome. Pioneer Sweet. And I guess we'll look at the wastes. I guess getting waste just tells them we have... And we're almost out of, out of basics here. We've drawn so many lands. All right. You got a green float and it's your upkeep. What are you, uh, what are you up to? You don't have a company. You would have cast it last turn, so...
In the main phase, three cards in hand. They play a land. They've got two cards in hand. One's fresh. They got nothing. Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Mm. I mean, if they have a Queller, we have a Queller. We have Worm to kill the Queller next turn, so... Also, this Chandra goes to the graveyard. We have Delirium for a Traverse, which is awesome. Cool. Let's give me the old Pluskies. And we had a Rootbound Crag, sure. I mean, they've drawn pretty bad this game. They've, they've, I mean, obviously, we, we three for one them, but they've, uh, they've been kind of flooded out since. We've also flooded, so I guess we can't, you know, it's whatever. But here it comes... They rip the company? Wow, sicko. Spellcrawler and Spectral Sailor. Pretty good, pretty good. We have a Hungry Ravager Worm, though. Ready to eat some flying creature. They're attacking Chandra down to two, which is fine. And they can't really stop this, right? Like, what do they have that stops this? I think we want to kill the uh, the sailor. Ooh. All right. Let's just start on plussing. I'm sure. Yeah, if we hit Worldbreaker, we're gonna cast that instead. So. Thought card is passage. Sure. I mean, glad we didn't draw that, right? So. Ravager Worm, Big Papa. And we're gonna give it haste. And we're going to fight with the Spectral Sailor. Right? Yeah, definitely. They have their flooded. This is great. They pay four, draw a card, we attack for four. They have a nibble gas herald. It's a pretty sick draw. Right. Well, now Chandra's dead, but the good news is we have Ashkana, which is great. So, like, don't know how Spirits deals with the uh, Ashkana. I also have Traverse for, uh, like, Worldbreaker. That's true. If I had made the made this a 5-6... We could have gotten Worldbreaker and then just got gotten K return. That's fair. Um, but I think we're just going to uh, Ashkana here. So whenever they play a Spirit, let's just go. Let's move, let's move combat. See what happens. Maybe they maybe they play a Spirit to tap this. We just, we just wrath them. No. Okay. Um. I mean, Traverse is mostly just Worldbreaker, Ravager Worm. I think we just play Ashkana. They can't spell color the, the Traverse also, which is kind of lame. Why do that in response to the Ishgana? Why not tap it? Spiders. I mean, there's no instant speed lord, right? Only have one card in hand. What are they up to here? Scooping. That's what. Ishkana. Too strong. All right. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, they, they got a company. Duh. Of course. Um. But they didn't. So whatever. And honestly, I mean, most of our stuff lives anyway. So. And then they're company, they're companying, and we're just playing the traverse and getting the uh, the thing and killing them anyway. So, oh my God, Ravager Worm! 
All right. So that was pretty sweet. Definitely that felt pretty good. We want to bring in definitely Magma Spray. Definitely second Ishkana. Definitely Kazlok's Return. What are we taking out? Um, I would say Glorybringer is like good but awkward. The Chandras probably aren't very good because they're so easy to kill. Paradise Shrews are come out too. Um, I like shaving a World Breaker. Then we have three sprays, two of braids, a bone crusher, four K returns. It's pretty good. Chandra's Awakened Inferno is like a little interesting because they can't counter it. Um, can mop up the small creatures, but it's a little clunky. Um, we see a lot of like the Stainful Stroke style cards in game two. I think I'm fine bringing in Chandra for game three. I also like that Worldbreaker can trigger K return and they can't counter that, which is cool also. So I think we're in good shape here. Daredevil to steal their Coco. We have some hits. We have some hits. Excuse me. Guarantee victory. Those who don't know, uh, the New York Rangers in the NHL uh, won the Stanley Cup in 1994. And the Rangers lost a tough game five to, uh, I think it was the Devils. And they were in the semifinals. And their captain, Mark Messier, said, I guarantee victory tonight at Madison Square Garden. I guarantee we're going to win and force a game seven. In that game, he scored like two goals, and they won. Why not to win the cup? It's dope. Now we're going to mulligan. Can't keep this end. Uh, this hand is significantly better. Um, we have K return, traverse. We're not going to traverse on one. Uh, we, should, we have Wayfinder. We're going to keep this. We'll ship one of the Ishkanas. Opponents on seven cards. Okay. That was a long time ago, yes. The Rangers have not won many championships. Before that, it was 1940. So, New York Rangers... Original six team, kind of embarrassing. That was the double, yes, the double overtime Matto goal, yes. Matto, Matto. That was that was in game seven. Game six was the guarantee game, and then game seven was the Matto goal. It went to double overtime, and the Rangers scored to force to force the to go to the finals. Matto, Matto. That's a good one. Center Wayfinder, let's go here. I imagine this is resolving. Rattle Chains, sure. RK returns locked and loaded here, so. Alright, so you got a Passage and a Rootbound Crag. I think we got the Passage for our Tracker, probably. And we're putting a Courser and a Carry to the, la in the graveyard, so we're almost at Delirium already, which is awesome. Uh, we'll take Passage. So we have three types in the graveyard already. Awesome. The key cards against spirits are basically the cards that cost five or more because they can't be spell colored. It's a pretty big place to be. All right, so... Now they could have Queller, obviously, which is kind of not good. Um, oh, well, that's... Now we got something to play for. So, the question now is, what do we do? All of their stuff is Flash. Um, we cast Tracker and they Queller it. That's a pretty, pretty bad tempo swing for us. Could just cast Traverse for a land, because I just want to make every land drop and cast Willbreaker. It also gives us Delirium for Ishkana. Calls us do nothing this turn and just attack and say go. I don't really hate. They flash in any spirit that's not Spellcaller or the 1 3 Lord. We get to clean up with the Kazlux return. So say go here, I think.
Matto! 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 Hope you got a spell pierce, my friend. Hope you got airbags. All right, now we're feeling phenomenal. All right, breeding pool, go. So that's kind of lame. It's a favorite company, but... We're just going to cast Tracker. If it resolves, we'll Passage. If not, we'll just Traverse for a land anyway. So either way, this is kind of fine. We're setting up for Ishkana into Warbreaker. So they cast Company response. They obviously have to have to hit the spell caller. Not this head. They just have it. Okay, that's fine. No problem with that. Get ourselves a forest, and then we'll traverse, and get ourselves some good land. Uh, I guess Sanctum of Ugin, I suppose. Yeah, sure. We're all colored up here. So you have Ashkana next turn. We're building up to a, a World Breaker with a Kozlux turn in the graveyard. We have Tracker also. Um... If they have, like, a specifically a Disable Stroke or, like, an Aether Gust, it's pretty annoying, but... Oh, Castle. Yeah, definitely Castle. I just didn't see it. Totally Castle. Not even close. Dumb, dumb play by me. Castle's a one-turn one earlier on Warbreaker. Huge punt. Huge punt. Uh, that sucks. All right, it's fun. All right, don't have a uh, Aether Gust or something. Yeah, obviously it's Castle Garenbrig. We can cast this one turn sooner. Big mistake. Hopefully it won't cost us, because we have Ashkana, and we're, and we're feeling pretty fine anyway, so. Just didn't, just didn't see it when I was skimming the lands. All the lands are mixed in with the cards, so it's just like, eh. Here comes, uh, here comes a company. Just don't be like Double Lord. Wanderer Spellqueller. Perfect. So they're going to use all their resources to try and get through my spiders. Then I'll cast Warbreaker and kill all their shit. Well, if we, 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 instead of drawing, needing to draw one land, we can draw two lands. I'm sorry. Instead of needing to draw two lands, you can only draw one land with Garen, with Garen Brig, So. Okay. I mean, as long as we can... Um, Let's cast, live to cast this. I think we're okay. And their attacks, like, still aren't even good. This is kind of just a freaking house. Oh, no, they're coming. Oh, Lord, he coming. Sure. That's pretty good. Um, I think we're just taking a million here. Um, and just leaving everything back for next turn. They have zero cards in hand. We're taking 10, going to 6. I think that's fine. Next turn, we can just track her and spray the the Herald. And we have really good blocks next turn, too, so this is fun. They draw, like, Declaration in Stone. It's bad for us, but what are you going to do, you know? Drawing castle also would be good, yes. It would be really cool if we had a castle. There's no way we could, we could have gotten that, though. No way, no how. Uh, all right. So, by this. Oh, I'm... S oh, I'm playing like crap today, folks. I'm just, I'm just playing on autopilot. Obviously, we cast this first, so they have a stupid thingy in play. God, idiot. Stupid. Uh, it's still fine. Um... How do we fix this? How do we fix this? If we cast it now, they just sack the Wanderer. If we let them untap and they draw a Spirit, our blocks are pretty bad. Yeah, we just screwed up really bad. I think I'd just say go. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, reach is huge. Man. Oh, thank God. Whew. No spirit. Oh lord, they coming. All right, so maybe before blocks, we just kill the herald. So they, they, the wanderer dies. We make much better blocks. Um, gosh, did you draw land? This and the spider blocks this, and two spiders block this, and take three. That seems fun. All right, let's just cast this and see what they're doing. They're F6-ing, okay. I mean, if they're F6, then we're gonna make some blocks, right? Like... Go to three? Seems fine. F6 value. Pyrian Eagle. This could be scoop lag here. You never know. Magic Island's been really slow today. We're hoping for scoop lag. Spider, 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 spider. Alright, so two spiders down, the trackers are back. And we are rolling now. Still have two spiders on defense for their two flyers. We got trackers on offense. Cool. Courser of Crufix. Um, we missed on a land. I kind of want to just field a ruin first for a clue and then Courser. Land, please. Courser. If they draw exactly our ghoul spell, we are dead. So that's unfortunate, but. I guess they need our ghoul spell and a. Yeah. So they like company to like. Some, all right, sure. All right, cool. So. A little iffy there. Not a problem. Not a problem. Guarantee's good. Guarantee's good. Deck's pretty sweet, honestly. Alright, comeback. Here's the comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Remember, folks, uh, we're supposed to play our matches, but no, no sponsors. Just forget it. Why shill? We got matches to win here. We got a guarantee to, to fulfill. Alright. Man, this double dip is taking so long. My next, uh, we have a third Your Deck Live today. And then we're, uh, we're way over the time on that one. This hand's great. I can keep this. Our third deck today is an awesome Demir deck. It is Demir, Specters, and Pioneer. What's up, Skip? Uh, we're winning now. No more losing. Turn one Lanarov is rude, but... Sun Battle Grove? What's going on here? Voice of Resurgence. They are playing things. Where my K returns at, you know? Cedar Wayfinder. Alright, I mean, it's okay. I mean, obviously this Wayfinder would be a lot better as a carry it did, but not really, I guess. Shelter Thicket. I think Forest is fine here. I mean, the Waste is like... I guess it's just a Waste, actually. Alright, Instant and Land to the bin. So... 
Close on Delirium. Close. Corsair. What are they? What are they doing? Radiant Fountain. I don't know what they're doing, um, but that's okay, I guess. Scavenging ooze. That's kind of annoying, but not really the end of the world, I guess. Um, Seder Wayfinder number two. Oh, Heliod Walking Ballista? Yeah, that probably makes sense. Rootbound Crag. Okay. Probably just want the Failed Bastard, honestly. Just better uh, drop tracker. I mean, they have two guards left. Oh, I have company on top. That's pretty sick. Alright. Um. Man, Corsair plus Heliod's pretty good. That's pretty good. Our hand's definitely kind of slow this game. Their hand was obviously super explosive. Um, we do have one creature in the graveyard, so we can't stop this uh, scavenging ooze. Not exactly uh, a great hand on our side. Um, let me just take this. Main deck scavenging use. And they are just jamming away over here. Um, okay. I think we're in trouble, folks. We're kind of just like not doing much. They have a company on top, too. Sort of kill the ooze here. Um, they'll eat something and leave us with mostly of the card types in the graveyard. And fortunately, Castle Garenberg can't cast Ravager Worm, which really sucks. That would be awesome. Um, because we're just hoping to draw probably Kozlux Return. So we can return into Worldbreaker. Top card is Elvish Mystic. Their hand is Collected Company. They get a main phase company here. Alright. Double Llanowar Elf. Llanowar Elf on top. Llanowar Elves for days. So yeah, K return would be phenomenal. That is what we're looking for for sure. Like me or Chandra? Chandra. Okay, well, we can't defend Chandra here. Chandra's gonna die. That's fine. So, K return, please. K return, no. Alright, well, now we just kill the Corsair. And we're just setting up for uh, Castle Garen Brig. Ravendor is pretty good, too, so. Still all the passage. Yeah, I should probably held this. I mean, Worldbreaker's like only okay at the moment, but they're really their their beatdown force is basically anemic now, and they have one lander off on top of their deck, so Ravager Worm can just come down and eat something. Um, I might just Worldbreaker them back to back, honestly. Just play Field of Ruin and say go. We're at eleven. Until uh. Until these voices actually die, they're just grizzly bears, so who cares? And then they have no real attack force otherwise. I'm really gonna kill that Lana Ralph. Dead. So dead. Yes, we understand. Alright, so Garen Brig. It's not exactly the uh, 
the world breaker we're looking for, but it is big. You know, it's doing a thing right now. It's kind of funny we actually like actively don't want to play Ravager Worms. We don't want to kill these uh, these voices. They have a company if it's bad. All right, they don't. Thank God. And now we have a, we have blocks. So we can like safely look for um, a K return in the graveyard. I'm pretty sure we block here. It'll be a six six. We have, we have two world breakers, so or Ravager Worm. That's annoying. Oh, I'm glad we blocked, I guess. Sylvan Karyatid. Um, I mean, I, I guess we just, uh, we can Worldbreaker exile the Ballista. And we have two blockers for their two creatures. Yeah, that works, actually. They shoot my thing, we go to seven. It's not ideal, but... Could also Ravager Worm to fight the Ballista and then play a blocker post-combat. That might actually be better. Um, I kind of like that better, actually, because we play, playing a second blocker is huge. The 0-3 blocks uh, the 2-2 really well. So... This goes to a 6-6. If I draw a creature, it goes to a 7-7. Seven, seven. can always double block it, too. Let's do that. So we got a forest. Activate Garen Brig for six. Play Ravager Worm. We're going to make it big. And we're going to make it a uh, fight. This. Let's just cast the the Wayfinder actually. That should be better, because the if they uh, we can jump block if we have to. I, I'd like that. I like that better actually. So we're at seven. A Wayfinder. And if it's, it's if, it, if it's at the key return, it's game over. It does not. Another Castle Garen Brig. And two tower strikers kind of sucks, but it's all right. The big thing is that if they play a creature, now I can just chump block the elemental token with the Wayfinder. I mean, our next turn we're going to play Warbreaker and kill their forest. So they're really, like, living on the edge here with all these land or elves. If we were able to draw a Kozlox turn and kill them all, it's going to be pretty gross for them. We have Ballista in our deck, too, so that's pretty good. Pumping the brakes here? Okay. I mean... We need to, like, draw stuff, but we're not, you know, we're in pretty decent shape. Ponza. Kill some lands. Kill your land. Kill your land. No attacks. Just say go. Obviously, Worldbreaker, Worldbreaker can also block all day, so. <clears throat> Eventually, we'll draw a K return. A braid? That's not bad. Uh, so. I mean, now I can start attacking, honestly. Same thing like the Worm and the Worldbreaker. And then if they put this through, I think we just abrade a land or elf to make this uh this into a two two. They they drew a forest last turn, so um yeah, we're not gonna cast a braid on their turn, obviously they get an elemental, so 
Let's just, uh, we're just gonna kill an, an elf. It's like not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think making the elemental smaller is really important, so. Maybe this is wrong though, because we actually kind of want the Warbreaker to die anyway. Yeah, I think it's actually wrong. This is, this, this is stupid. Because we, I'm thinking about it in the sense that I, I don't want the elemental to beat the Warbreaker in combat. But given that we have a million lands, but we kind of do want the Warbreaker to beat the, to die in combat, so. Oh, they do have a company. Oh, they have a cord. Cord's legal? I don't know, cord's legal. Huh. Sure. I mean, maybe I'm an idiot. Cord for four. They get Heliod, they don't have white. So, doesn't really do much. Um, Corsair of Griffix, all right. And a Bugler on top, can't guess that. Radiant Fountain on top, all right, sure. Heliod, can't cast it, sure. It is funny, we actually just actively want our, our Worldbreaker to die. Paradise Druid. Oh boy. Send in, send in, send in both world breakers. Like they can't, they can't, can't just take damage forever, you know. Kind of like this. We have blockers too, so every jump block makes their board so much worse. Oh, they can block with their voice though. That's fine though. We're not going to field them as they have no white, so there's no point in giving them white mana. <clears throat> Draw Heliod. They have another Heliod on top. Okay. Didn't change. So, pretty easy block here, I think. If they have, if they have exactly, like, if they have another cord, I guess, it's gross. I guess we'll block with, with the with the Paradise Druid. I doubt they have another cord or a way to play a creature at instant speed, but let's just play it safe, I guess. Sure. <laughs> the only got attack was very good. Glory banger. Damn. That's what's up. That should be the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back here. Exert this, and they're drawing an uncastable next turn too. So. Their hand is Heliod, they're drawing Heliod. Um, they're going to a, a solid three life points. The elemental's getting smaller and smaller. No K return, no problem. No K return, no problem. Aether Mech, I got you, my friend. I told you. I, mean, I make guarantees, all right? Conceded from the game. There we go. Scoop lag. I guarantee we would not lose any more matches in this league. And we're about to go about to go 2-0. Uh, after going 0-3. <laughs> Bam. All right, so. Obviously, our K returns are insane here, which is great. Um, top card, Forest. Next card, Courser. The Passenger. So, what do we want to do here? 
It's cool that our Ravager Arms are like actively good against them too, because the fight effect is actually pretty cool. Ravager Arms is good. I'm a surprised this card doesn't, doesn't see more play. Um, all right, so K return. I guess we're spraying, right? Uh, no Chandra, no Ooze. Don't need a Shkana. We definitely want the World Breakers because flashing back K return is so good. Um, I would say the Paradise Druid can go. Got to cut a few more cards here. Um, honestly, Tyler's Tracker is like. I guess they're never going to kill Tyler's Tracker. Maybe Chandra Torch Defiance isn't very good. So they're on the play also. You got a Chandra. Ishkana's like also not super exciting against them. Glorybringer's pretty much always exciting. I guess we'll shave one World Breaker. I think this is fine. Don't think you want big Chandra. Yeah, let's try this. Maybe like four world breakers a little too many. Because we could we can always traverse for it too. Or mill it with the uh the wayfinders and stuff. Rex Sage or Ballista. I mean, it's I don't think that really matters. We can just kill it with our many other things. What does X in a card cost mean? It means it's a variable. So for example, um you can play this card, uh Walking Blister that's not there anymore. Um, you can pay it for whatever you want. So if you play... The more, most common variable card is like a, a Fireball effect where it's a red and an X and it just says deal X damage something. So you can pay a red and one, deal one damage. Play a red and five, deal five damage. They're usually weaker cards, but their flexibility makes them reasonable. All right, it sounds, it sounds fun. Fortified Village, Temple Garden, Land of War Elves. Okay. I would like to draw. You can pay as much as you want, as much as much as you can as you, as you can afford to pay. All right. So I mean, obviously we want to draw a K return, but you could also hit K return off Wayfinder too, which is cool. So I guess it's like a little farther in the future, but voice, sure. Shaper Sanctuary. Now we're much more invested in uh, finding our K returns because. That makes all of our spot move pretty bad, but... Wayfinder, show me the way. This is the way. Ravager Worm, Corsair, Traverse. So that is almost Delirium by itself. If we just cycle this shoulder thicket, we'll have Delirium, so... Corsair of Crucifix. Their top card is Fortify Village. Next top card is Ballista. Right. Obviously, we can abrade to break up the combo if we have to. You know, they can't combo next turn unless they have a um, exactly Heliod and the Life Gain Land. No, any land will do it, because of Corsair. So, we could leave a, a Braid, but I think that's like really, really conservative. And it's gonna be really hard to leave that up for the next like 10 turns. So, I mean, it's all they need is a Heliod in the land. But also, we'll look at a token too. I'm just gonna play Corsair. If they, if they kill us, they kill us. It's as simple as that. The ways just to recur are, uh, our war breakers. Our card is Chandra. So, if they have, that's pretty cool. A uh, spell or ability. It's, it sucks. They have the combo and they kill us. They kill us. They have it turn four with all rolled up with a shaper sanctuary and everything else. That's fine. Playing around it is too costly. Oh, I guess they play. You're right. They can't do everything. They can't... I have a cord. They can't play Heliod. This is cute. Uh, and play a land and have a 1-1. One, one. You're right. You're right. You are correct. So they couldn't kill us at all. So me playing my thing was right. Uh, 
Oh, I gotta give it lifelink, too. Yeah, you're right. I don't think the Heliod combo is very good. It requires so much to actually do anything. Alright, so they have Heliod. They have a voice on top. We have a K return on top. Um, which is not bad. Corsair plus Heliod is good. It's definitely a thing. Okay. I think we just Chandra and plus and maybe even cycle the thicket to get delirium. I kind of like that actually. We can chump block if we have to to keep protect it. Untap. We can uh, um yeah. Hmm. I mean, now that they have blister, we're dead. But they're gonna have a second visionary also. Need world breakers, you know. They can go ballista on one. All right, they can't play the the voice and the ballista. Uh, all right, I think we just play Lance. I go. We can cycle a thicket. Charming Prince. Okay. All right. So now we uh, we have to kill it. In response to the Heliod. Otherwise, they give it lifelink twice and kill us. So much rather do is we have to have six cards in our hand. But whatever, I guess. Uh. Destroy target artifact. And they get a card and a token, which sucks, but it's better than dying, so. Draw a Charming Prince. Company on top? That's pretty good. Alright, well now we have Delirium. Which I guess we had anyway, because of the instant, but... Chandra... They have a token... I feel like their their fair draw was might have been... What are they doing? Are they just, like, gonna gain a life here? Sure. They are making a very large Corsair of Grufix. We can also world breaker if we can find a world breaker. Yeah, like they've they've just like had a pretty good start here on the fair card side of things. So it's been pretty good for them. Ravager worm. That's not very exciting. Um, I think we're in big trouble. I guess we can just like we can we can world breaker next turn. So I guess we just like K return here. Maybe we Chandra K return. No, because I want to cast the uh, traverse. So if we just traverse K return, set up for world breaker, kill a few things, take a bunch. What are we gonna do? You know. Very close to killing everything, but not quite. Not quite. Oh, I had a passage on top. God damn it. I clicked too fast. Alright, I mean, it's it's kind of a surprise we have Garen Brig. So, that part's cool, I guess. But... 
Cast Company, fantastic. Fairgrounds Warden, oh my god, they're going to make my thing survive. Wow, they are. That's awesome. Uh, Dramocus Command, sure. That's pretty cool. Um, the Corsair's going to live, unfortunately, but... Maybe we exile the Corsair and not the Heliod? Hmm. Obviously, with Heliod and Blade, we, they, we can, they can just kill us. We can beat Corsair eventually. I don't think, I don't think it's big. Let's just, let's just kill the Heliod. That's pretty cool. Castle Garenberg. Basically, Ancient Doom. Right, so we're going to exile Heliod. They don't draw any cards also, which is kind of nice too, so... Get that out of here. Get that out of here. They get a token. It's 2-2. Two, two. We get a boom boom. And next turn we start gaining some life. They have a company on top. That's bad. Top card was also a... Um, I guess they have a they have a Dramocus command on top. So they can like plus counter this and fight and kill my Corsair. But... What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Sure. It's interesting. Sure. They have two more creatures. Oh, we're Forge Dead. Oh, sure. All right. That's fine. We're at four. We died. So, that's fine. I mean, like, they had a pretty good hand on the play there. They just got ahead with their land rolls and stuff. You know, we didn't have a K return fast enough. The Shaper Sanctuary is obviously also annoying. But... Yeah, Shonda's not very, not very good when you're behind, obviously, so... Okay, no worries, no worries. Um, We, we did we did board a Chandra out, too, which is kind of annoying with you both of them, but... Um... Hmm... Maybe... I don't, I don't know what Vivian does that we want. Um... Rexage kills the... The stupid one mana enchantment, but that's kind of thin, you know. I wouldn't hate the fourth tracker. Let's do. Uh, does kill Corsair? That is true. Um, it's like, what am I playing it over? You know. Everything seems really good. Maybe Ravager Worm just like isn't awesome. Honestly, maybe Glorybringer isn't awesome. We can beat their small stuff. It's the big stuff that's a problem. Alright, I'll bring Rexage. I can buy that. Kind of want the fourth uh, tracker, too, because they just can't kill it, but... Right, let's try this. I don't think we want Vivian. I don't think we do. Maybe we do, but I don't think we do. Shatter's also much better on the play, too, so. Big game here. Big game here. I did guarantee victory. Big game, Zibby. Here we go. Uh, the same plays. Um, yeah, take a mountain. What's up, JP? Yep, this is the the last match of a double dip of Aethermex Ponza deck. This is the my fixed version of a deck. Been a kind of a rough league, but 
Attack's pretty sweet. Okay, so bolt the bird or nah. Uh, pretty sure I wanted to develop my own board. Next turn's Wayfinder and a Braid. A Braid's also our only piece of interaction, so. I would love to draw a Kozlox return also, so. Right, that's pretty annoying, but it's fine. Stamping ground. So what's Wayfinder? All right, spray carry to traverse. So that's that's delirium. We are delirium is online, good to go. We could go fetch a Rex Age, but they have a second courser, which is pretty annoying. Um, Ravager Worm is still a few turns away. I kind of like a Braiding the Lana Ralph here. I'm just slowing him down. There's also a chance they don't have a land, which would be really cool. So, Charming Prince, okay. They don't have a land here, this is dope. Deacon! Resell, welcome back. Are right, they do have a land. Courser number two. So that makes the... Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's do that. Forget everything else. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We have Chandra to make mana next turn, too. We don't have a, uh, a thing yet, but... We could also... Um, Traverse for like Castle Garenberg. I don't think we need to though. This Chandra's probably gonna live. Unless they have a Dramocus command. And even if they do, it's like kinda fine. Um let me get to a breaker and search for a blister or something. So we're gonna kill a courser, leave back a blocker. And the question is, do we want to traverse for Castle Garenberg so we can cast Worldbreaker next turn? Right, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that works. That works. Or do we want to traverse for... I guess we can get Rex Age next turn, but I think we want to... If Chandra lives, I'm, I'm planning for Chandra dying. That's, that's what we're doing right now. Um, that's true, we just leave back both blockers. Yeah, I guess we should just do that. I, mean, I was thinking about playing Stopping Ground, but yeah, this makes more sense. So just do this. So, next turn, we have red, red. We have a million mana. We're ready to roll. They drew Charming Prince, and they have a company on top. Okay, so... I kind of block with the Wayfinder, because this kind of smells like a uh, Dramocus command. And losing Karyatid... I guess it doesn't actually matter, because we'll still have two red. This is actually fine. Let's just do this. They want they can like fight the Wayfinder, I guess, but it wastes their entire turn. They get to untap with Chandra plus and play, play Worldbreaker, which is pretty insane. It's probably the game, so. Okay. They have a land. They do have a land. Okay. What's up, BMATs? Yep. We're playing Tracker. The best card ever printed, of course. And now... What do we get with Sanctum Vugan? Do we get a Ballista? Or do we get another World Breaker? Probably another World Breaker, I would think. Breaker also just deals with Heliod. Because now we're really ahead on the board. So, like, we're only really scared of getting comboed out. 
So, I agree, Pants Man. I agree. A little hedge against getting comboed. Chandra's really good in this deck. Chandra's really good. We could also traverse for Ravager Worm next turn and like kill whatever they play with Chandra. That's awesome. Make red to cast the worm. All right, so obviously they have company. Uh, Corsair's pretty good too. Um, so they're gonna company. I guess if they hit Heliod, we just lose. If they hit Heliod and have Ballista in hand, but we can't actually do anything about it. So. Like, we can't traverse. We could traverse for Ballista. That defends us against it. That's pretty good, actually. So maybe I, maybe I should actually got Ballista, actually. Yeah, I'm stupid. If we get Bone Crusher, that works, too. That works, too. Um, so we, like, red, red. Green. Traverse. Shock. Yeah, I think I want to um, hold World Breaker because we're not like the game's not over next turn, you know. I want to defend this? Sh we're gonna. I we're gonna. What are we gonna do here? A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I mean, Ballista for three is pretty good, but all right, we're gonna. I think we need to Courser or make mana for Courser though. So I go, because we want to have mana to traverse and cast Bone Crusher Giant on their turn. So we're going to make red, red. Top card is Chandra. Right, we don't really want that one. So let's cast Traverse. We're gonna get Bone Crusher Giant. Again, Bone Crusher, I mean, if we kill their land, they can't win next turn, but if they get the combo, they just kill us turn after that. You know, so I think we're not really in a rush to, to do that yet. Um, top card, land, cool. Castle Garen Brig, less cool, but still fine. Um, and we're gonna attack. Night of Autumn, Voice of Resurgence. So kind of annoying because that kills our uh, kills our courser. I mean, if we want to keep Chandra alive, we get the Bone Crusher Giant, the Night of Autumn, right now, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, all right. Attack Chandra, sure. Charming Prince, powerful magic card. Powerful magic card. They're scrying two. Top, top. That's kind of scary. And one card in hand. Hmm. Interesting. One, two. You can cast everything. All right, we're gonna plus Chandra and see what turns up. It was a land. Um.
That top top kind of concerns me. Like, they have another company here, but why would they company before, or scry then company? They can't have Ballista too, unless they just draw it. So, like, our clock's low. Um, I kind of want to kill them. I kind of wish I had searched for Ballista and played it. I mean, we're not going to defend Chandra. We should try, we need to try and kill him, I think. Let's play the Bone Crush Giants, they go. Takes a million mana to get Heliod in play and Ballista in play, and, we can, and Warbreaker breaks up either one of them, so... For the company, I guess the company to like exactly Heliod and uh, what's it called? Um, bl uh, bugler, and they hit the uh, hit the thing. All right, so we're just gonna kill the two two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a locker. Shatter's dead, which is fine. I guess the World Breaker was lethal, whereas Bone Crusher Giant is not, because it puts them to one, but... Spell. That's a spell. That is definitely a spell. This turns out too bad for us. Almost like Heliod Boros Reckoner or something. Bugler. Scavenging Ooze. That's pretty good. And a Ballista. That's pretty sick. gain a lot of life with this ooze, but I think it's fine. Alright, I mean... Pretty sure they can't kill me. I guess that they have like, I mean, the ooze gains life. So they go Heliod, Ballista. No, they still need too much mana. So they have three mana for Heliod, two mana for Ballista. Yeah, they're one mana short. They could use the scavenging ooze to um, to put the extra counter on the Ballista. Um. But it's still not enough to give it lifelink also. And if it, so they have to cast either one of them, in which case we can world breaker it. So this is aggressive. How is this deck Ponza? Well, the original version was playing like Frenzy Tilling and other big like actual LD cards. They were really bad though. So we're playing four Warbreakers and three Ravager Worms. That's our Ponza element. They're going deep. All right. Hmm. 
Damn. Is that game? They can gain one more. Let's throw their third team. We fight the Atlanta Elves. Attack with everything. 4, 8, 12, or 1 short of killing them. God damn it. Um... Right? Yeah, fight land or else. Haste, I got everything. They eat one, go to 13. They block this, take 4, 8, 12. Or one short of killing them. Alright, um, stack. Hmm. Problem is, Castle Garenberg can't cast Ravager Worm. Which is pretty unfortunate. The Ravager Worm has been very, very good. There are a lot of lands in the format that have uh, non-mana activated abilities. All the Castles, Muta Vaults, Ramanap Ruins. Um, it's actually been very, very good. It's good that the fight is good, the haste is good. It's been pretty sweet, but... I mean, they get to gain some more life here, but now we have even, even more attackers, so I think we're fine. I'm not sure what they can rip here. Or maybe Heliod, actually. Heliod might do it. I'm kind of killing a land now, but um, so they gain a life, make their thing bigger. We chump block it with Sylvan Carry it anyway. Heliod, two for Ballisto, one for Lant, or one for yeah. I can't draw a whole Heliod and a land, so. Bugler, sure. What do they get? Another ballista? Yeah, because they have two ballistas now. In carry to block scavenging ooze, Ravager Worm kills a blocker and makes a new attacker. They can play both ballistas to like chump block, but that's pretty sketch. Man, Aether Mech, you are getting your money's worth here with this double dip. I am not gonna lie. You are getting your money's worth. There's a ballista. Okay, so untap. They can gain... They're at 7 life effectively. We play Ravager Worm, give it haste. I don't think we can kill him yet. Um, give it haste, fight, whatever, land or elf. Attack with everything. They block 3 things. Oh, they're dead. Yeah, I'm, I'm being stupid. Um, so yeah, we... So... They go to seven, they block three things, and they die. Right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna get haste. Uh, just fight the Lana Ralph, it doesn't really matter. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a card in their hands, Ballista, so. I mean, we had some really slow opponents in the first league. They were just taking forever. Um, the game's just been long, honestly. This has been, I mean, like, our opponent's clock's on four, you know? It's just been really, really long games. Doesn't have trample, right? No, no trample. All right, I mean, I believe you're dead. Look dead to me. Oh, yeah, guaranteed victory. All right, so we ended up going 2-3 bolt with both decks, but I think that uh, the, the the deck we just played was a vast improvement. Um, we had two matchups where we just felt like we couldn't win. They were combo decks. We weren't really equipped for that, but we're playing a pretty reasonable fair game. The Delirium package is pretty awesome. Uh, Worldbreaker's been great. Marty, you reset up. 13 months, thank you. Um... 
I definitely would tune up a little bit. We had made some deck building mistakes, I think. Uh, this power dash drew, which is bad. And Dire Fleet, Daredevil, unnecessary. Second Ishkana, I think that's pretty good, but I think that the like the Amber Cool just seems dumb. I'm not even ever, ever gonna need that. And then the the Phoenix also seems kinda dumb. And the fourth tracker is also probably not necessary. I mean actually to Tyrants it seems worse. So you want like uh two damping sphere and two alpine moon. So you have a chance to beat the combo decks, which we could we could not beat them. Uh, also an Eidolon would be really good. That's actually a really good idea. Let's do that. Two Alpine Moon. And then one Eidolon of the Great Rebel. So we have a little more anti-combo stuff, which, which, which could not beat a combo deck to save our life. Um, got the, the Paradise Druid. There are definitely games we were looking for Kozlox turn and couldn't find it. Um, maybe, maybe four tracker remains very reasonable. Tracker was really good. I like tracker a lot. Scab clan, whatever. I mean, the you're probably going to be tutoring for it with Traverse, so being cheaper is better, I think. The fourth Ravager Worm? I think three is fine. Honestly, four World Breaker might also be too many. Um... Glorybringer is obviously very good, but I don't think Glorybringer is like answering problems we can't already answer. I wouldn't mind another cheap removal spell, that's for sure. Um, Shauna's are great. I think I want three and three, realistically. Uh, maybe play like another cheap removal spell. Let's put a spray in the main. Um. Chandra's Triumph? That's not very good. Bone Crusher was good. But the problem is Bone is a creature for Delirium. We kind of wanted a few more instants, but Bone Crusher was pretty good. Hello, Magic Online. And we are... Magic Online is just not having it today. Just wants nothing to do with anything. I could buy that, actually. Bone Crusher's pretty good. And then Castle Garenberg was great. The uh, Passages were good. Field was good. Sanctum was good. Waste was good. Cycling lands were good. Yeah. The deck seems super sweet to me, honestly. Again, it was kind of a kind of a rough league. You know, those combo decks really just stuck it in us. But the deck seems sweet. Seems super fun. This is much more competitive than the first deck was. The first deck was cool, but it uh, just couldn't really beat a Tarawal one drop ever. And this deck can beat one drops and beat other decks too. So... While still keeping, I don't, realistically, there aren't many playable LD cards in the format. We're playing almost all of them. So, this is about as Ponza as you can get if you want to uh, be you want to be competitive as well. What's up, Slasher? Good to meet you, my friend. I usually have a Sharpie on me, my bad. But, awesome. Aether Mech, thank you so much, my friend. Here's your updated list. I can put it in Discord if you want, or you can just see it right here, obviously. Big thanks to Aether Mech, who got their money's worth big time. This was a double dip, almost seven hours long. I usually block off two and a half hours for each uh, each league. This is just a really, really long one. Really long one. So, big thanks to Aethermech. Big thanks to everyone watching. Um, we have one more league to do, but for now, um, YouTube folks, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe. Helps me out so much. Thank you so much, YouTube folks. I love you, and I'll see you guys next time.